Mr. President, you have a quorum. We're live. All right. Good morning, everyone. This is the City of San Angelo Development Corporation um, a meeting for January 27th, 2021. I will open us this morning in a word of prayer. If you'll bow your heads with me, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for this uh, all the blessings in our life. Father, we would ask that you watch over this meeting and guide our minds and our hearts as we uh, do the economic business for the city. Father, we would ask that you watch over our nation right now, our leaders, also all the illness and sickness and all the confusion and anxiety in the world. Uh, Father, we would ask that um, you bless us and that our work be to your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, notice is hereby given in accordance with an order from the office of I don't have my glasses. <laughs> notice is hereby given in accordance with an order of the office of the governor issued March 16th, 2020 of the regular meeting of the City of San Angelo Development Corporation scheduled for January 27, 2021 at 8.30 a.m. The McNeese Convention Center, South Meeting Room, 501 Rio Concho Drive, San Angelo, Texas. Will not be open to the public. Coast CDC members and staff will attend virtually in order to advance the public health goal of limiting face-to-face -face meetings, also called social distancing. To slow the spread of the coronavirus COVID-19, there will be no public access to the regular meeting location. A public free of charge audio video broadcast of the meeting will be available on the city's YouTube channel. The meeting agenda and the agenda packet are posted online. Members of the public who wish to submit public comment on agenda items must send their written comments via email to nora.navarez at cosatx.us by noon, January 26th, 2021. The subject must be in the following format, public comment, item number, January 27, 2021. All emails must include your name and address. Please note all public comment emails relevant to the posted agenda items received by the deadline will be published as part of the agenda packet prior to the meeting and are therefore public record. Call 325-653-7197 for staff assistance. Anyone who wishes to speak remotely during the statutory mandated public hearing of the regular agenda items 4C must send their request to nora.navarez at cosatx.us by noon, January 26, 2021 to register as a speaker and obtain information regarding how to make a public comment remotely during the meeting. A record of the meeting will be available to the public in accordance with the Open Meetings Act upon written request. Do we have any public comment, Nora? Did any come through? Uh, from the public, no. Okay, do we have any public comment? Actually, we do. From those uh, vending virtually. Yes, actually, what I'd like to do is, I, uh, if you recall, back on November, we announced the business plan winners. And I have two of our winners uh, on our Zoom meeting and they are San Angelo to go and uh, Texas Australia Rock Company. So uh, the first ones are, I believe, San Angelo to go is online. So um, guys, if y'all like to say a few words. Cool. Yeah. Can everybody hear me? Perfect. Yeah, cool. Thank you, guys. I just want to say start off by saying thank you for your time. Like uh, whenever we can get in front of you in person, we definitely want to because we definitely want to kind of present to you and kind of show you some things that. Hopefully it comes off more in the room than over Skype, but we, we want to do this for sure. So we obviously were the owners of San Angelo to go. My name's Preston Wimberly. This is Carson Beavers and actually Cameron Jenkins is, is right here. It's just, we're, we're actually up in the, uh, the small business center office kind of using the new technology. We have the big TV and we're kind of zooming in all on a, a platform. So it's pretty cool. Um, so this year, uh, a little bit about San Angelo to go October, Last year was our five-year anniversary, October 15th. So we're coming up kind of around the corner, hopefully coming up on six years this October, coming a little bit faster than you think. In 2020, we were able to complete 106,000 deliveries just in the San Angelo area. So kind of to give you a little bit of an idea of how much, how many people we're reaching, we do reach, we, we completed 106,000 to unique addresses last year. And, you know, kind of with that, we do, 
we want to say that, you know, we're the local guys and that is kind of our brand. And, and that's not just our brand and our motto, but it's something, you know, we take into every aspect of our business. You know, we're friends with a lot of the owners. Like, I, I think I know some of y'all here and, and I, I want to say, hey, to the guys I know, I'm sorry, but it, it's part of our brand. It's part of what we do. We think it's important to, to be friends with our community. And, and to be honest, you know, we just signed up a couple more restaurants yesterday up on the north side of town. And uh, El Him, I don't know if y'all have seen it. It's just a couple up there on Chadburn. And, and we really think it's important to support those local businesses to kind of keep San Angelo what it is going forward. Uh, winning this competition has been really big for us as far as, you know, we, we went to ASU. We've kind of always been a cool business. But this, this competition kind of combined with the 2020, the COVID and all that stuff, really made us take our business even more serious than we already did. And it really made us understand how big it was and understand, you know, those 100 drivers that drive for us. Like, we've had some conversations that, like, we really helped them through some hard times. And, and the gravity of that really hit us because, you know, we started this for real in a trailer. Like, straight up, we had a business trailer and, like, we did it. We didn't do the garage because the garage was full of stuff and it was cold. But the trailer had the air conditioning and stuff, so it was a lot easier to operate out of. So we did that, and you know, uh, so like we, it, you know, we have to transition, but we think this is part of one of that transition is being able to step up. Working up here at the small business center has been tremendously helpful. You know, we got the three months free from the competition, but uh, we think we might stay up here a little bit longer just because you know we we like the interaction with the people, we we like the facility. It really, it really has been helpful for us with all that stuff. And then um, the final topic, we were just talking about experience being in the competition. <laughs> so this is, I like, I've, I've talked to a lot of people about it because again, you know, we just, we talked to all of these businesses throughout the city and, and I kind of explained to him what it was. Again, we went to college. He was a, he was a, a bachelor's in business administration. I was actually political science. So I didn't, I did some business, a business law, some marketing, but this was like a high stakes NBA condensed. That's what I kind of explained it to is like, it, it got us really in touch with the numbers of our business. And so we were able to kind of go in and learn our business in a different way. So, you know, this whole time we've been kind of close to the ground doing what works, just trying to make it work. But this allowed us to kind of sit back and figure out that, you know, the calm, slow steps kind of work better for a business that is solidified versus, you know, just kind of working by the seat of your pants. So we, we right. think that, you know, this competition is going to take us to the next level. Again, we've done food and food, if you can imagine, is, is one of the hardest things to get delivered right, you know, as far as variables, getting it hot. And, and so as we move into retail, you know, with y'all's help, we think that, you know, we're going to be able to really help the city with a lot of cool stuff. And like the conversations I'm having with all these retailers, like they're really excited. We don't have it all quite up right now. If you go online, we have one business up. It's called the shoe box. We're kind of just testing it. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of niche. We want to start a little bit more niche and then work into the, to the everyday products just so that we, we do it right. And so, you know, delivery done right. That's our thing. And, uh, right. and I guess, you know, I just want to end with, again, you know, it's not our, one of our, our biggest saying that we're going to continue forward is it's, it's bigger than food delivery. It's about supporting our community. And we really believe that it's not just, you know, we're not just saying it's for real. And we hope you can see it through our actions. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next guest speaker is Brian Barbie. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Um, first off, I want to um, send my congratulations to uh, San Angelo to go at, at I've used their services and they're great. Um, it's, it's great to have a, a local company doing something like Uber Eats or DoorDash and they, they really are great. So i um, trying to figure out how to incorporate them to move our blocks, but they're, our blocks are a little bit heavier than, than most blocks. So, <laughs> but it's, um, yeah, growth wise, we've, we've actually started, um, since we started in September producing uh, the blocks here in San Angelo, it's, it's grown, um, it's grown a lot. So, uh, this month we've probably moved around 2,000 blocks. Um, we thought this was going to be a slow month, and um, next month we've already have excess of 10,000 blocks sold. So we're at max capacity in, in terms of what we can do with the machinery. 
Uh, we have two more machines that are um, on the assembly line, so they'll be coming out of um, the UK starting probably in June. We'll get the first one on the ground here. We're going to put that machine here to work, and we're going to try to rail um, most of our blocks out of um, San Angelo. So um, basically, we're going to try to distribute throughout the U.S. from a localized point. Um, I think it's feasible. We're working a lot with South Plains, Alumisa Railroad, and, and Texas Pacifico to see how we can get these blocks moved. So um, that's our biggest hurdle is logistics, um, but we're working with it and we're trying to get it. But given that, we're still seeing blocks go up to, um, we're shipping to Michigan, Indiana, we're shipping all over. So um, that being said, um, we, we expect to continue to grow. Um, this yard we're at now is, in terms of capacity, we're, we're limited. We're going to have to pour a bigger concrete pad to be able to make more blocks because um, we're just, um, we're, we're basically maxed out in terms of what we can do. So we're going to figure out a way to make more blocks and do it more efficiently. Um, we're the only ones in the, uh, in the United States that have this product and we have the utility patent on it. So um, it's, it's a very unique product and um, um, in terms of what people are actually doing with it is amazing. So we're doing a lot of home builds, um, a lot of commercial buildings, retaining walls, sea walls, um, just about anything you can think of, a structural product. So we're building a lot um, and we're doing it cheaper uh, than wood or, or steel. So that's where we, uh, we come in. So it's um, hope to grow. We're, we're employing about three people here. That's probably gonna double over the next year. So, um, and San Angelo has been great. Um, we really, we started seeing a lot of projects go up here and uh, locally, most of our product was leaving and going to central Texas, but we're starting to see some more um, product go, go west. We got a lot in Midland, a lot in Odessa. Uh, Fort Stockton has four buildings going up, so it's, it's taking off. But no, it, and it's and we really appreciate um, you know getting second place. We thought was that's awesome for us, and uh, not just the the actual monetary value, but the actual uh, getting to know um, some of the the men and women here that are actually entrepreneurs helping us out. So it's great. So um, aside from that, it's it's been awesome. So really appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank you both for being being here and telling the board and our viewers about your businesses. Nora, if I could add something. Sure. I uh, just want to congratulate both of them and the third place winner. Um, the, uh, I think it's great uh, examples of local entrepreneurs who have been very successful. Uh, they're great entrepreneurs and it's a great example of growing your own here in the community. The whole purpose of the competition started restarted five years ago was was for that, and I'd like to thank COSA DC uh, for being a partner with the SBDC and ASU College Noise Fencing College of Business for uh, running this competition, partnering with it, and most of all providing the funds for the prizes. So thank you, <laughs> and Nora, for your for your part in it as well, being wow. a great uh, coordinator with myself and Vincent. So. Thank you. Yeah, Nora, you do a great job with this, so thank you. And Dave, you too, thanks for your help. This is one of my uh, favorite parts of being on the board of Coast DC. Hey. Is every year getting to meet these guys and uh, see this competition. And San Angelo to go, you guys feed my family at least three or four nights a week, so I appreciate that too. <laughs> We're gonna have to get you a discount code. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that's like. Now you're talking. Actually, we could, you know, actually, let's just do it right now. I'll, I'll do a, we'll do the Costa DC as a, a discount code. And so it'll be five, four nine nine off your order. Your first time you use it. And that's for the public, you know, it's like, this is a public thing. So the, everyone in the San Angelo can use it. We'll just, we'll make it right here when we get off the code. And so for real, four nine nine off. That's not there, a big deal. But there may know. be some restrictions on, on accepting gifts like that for a, a <laughs> Well, we can just make it, it available to the whole city. city. That's why I said I, I did realize I, I forget. <laughs> you know, the Zoom kind of gets me off. But no, for the whole city, we can just make it. But we'll talk about it. I'll talk to Nora. <laughs> and once again, the lawyer brings a wet blanket. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Good job, Appreciate Brandon. It. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, nor is there anything else? Nothing else. Public comment? Okay. No. 
All right, thank you. Moving on, two, three, consent agenda. Consider approving the November 2020 financial statements. B, consider approving the December 16th meeting minutes. And C, consider approving the necessary corporation disbursements. Uh, do I have a motion? Move for approval of consent items uh, A through C. Thank you, Bill. Do I have a second? Second. 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 Oh. Yeah. I think Erica got there. <laughs> Thank you, Erica. Uh, any other discussion about it? All in favor, say aye when I call your name, please. Uh, Ed. Aye. Ed. Aye. aye. Erica. Aye. Bill. Aye. Darlin. Aye. Is that everybody? Max. Aye. Max. Aye. Aye. I am also in the affirmative. Motion carries. Thank you all. Uh, moving on to four, regular agenda A, presentation of the 2020 City of San Angelo Development Corporation annual report. Presentation made by Mr. Guy Andrews, Director of Economic Development, and Mr. Michael Looney, Vice President of Economic Development for the Chamber of Commerce. Okay, and Mr. Andrews is having a technical problem now that I'm locked up in here, so I'm trying to get out of uh, sharing the screen and move him back into putting ours up, but... Uh, I'm not having any success. It's crazy. Always a new problem. I may have to go and move in with Nora to in order to to do this one. So let me see what are what are you all seeing on your screen right now? You, just you. Okay, sorry about that, Guy. If you'd like, I could do my presentation since I don't have slides. Well, you uh, yeah. See, see if you can do that and see if it will. I don't have. I don't have any slides, so I was going to say I can just go through my presentation while you figure out your slides, if you'd like. Okay, well, it's, yeah, go ahead. I'm completely just locked up over here, so go ahead with your presentation, and I'll see what I can do. Mr. President, would okay, you like to So we are going to table A. We're going to move on to B. Consider approving the December 2020 financial statements. Presentation by Tina Deersky, Director of Finance. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, board. Again, Tina Deersky, Director of Finance. I'm going to present your first quarter financial statements. Uh, we ended the quarter about 4% over our budget for revenue, which is good. Um, however, sales tax revenue has been down for two months in a row now, so we're continuing to watch that closely. Uh, sales tax revenue for December was down 6.6% and for January it was down 10.31% in, in comparison with the same month in the previous year. Year to date though, sales tax revenue is up by 0.72%. And moving on to your balance sheet for the economic development side, um, not a whole lot of activity on the balance sheet this month. There is about $6 million in investment that I wanted to point out. However, also wanted to let you know that interest is performing very poorly right now at about 0.1%. So we are watching that closely as well. Um, and I also do want to point out that there is $6 million or, or approximately $6 million in unassigned fund balance. Um, you will see a decrease to that amount uh, probably on the next month's financial statements as we will be budgeting for the airline services contract. And on your income statement for economic development, uh, we did make a payment here this month for the Ports to Plains membership. We also had some expenditures related to the industrial park phase two. And on your ballot balance sheet, 
Um, again, not, not a lot of activity going on here. The only thing I wanted to point out is that we are continuing to build up uh, the fund balance for the upcoming debt service payments. And then there's also almost $3 million in unassigned fund balance here as well. And then on your income statement for the ballot side, um, not much activity here, just a very small payment for West Texas Water Partnership on this side. Um, and that's all I have for the financials, unless any of you have questions for me. I don't have any questions. Anyone else? Questions, concerns? I just have a quick question. Um, so the investments, are they just CDs? Is that what it is? No, it's not just CDs. We have a policy that governs what we're allowed to invest in, and it's governed by the Public Funds Investment Act. Um, we do invest in some commercial paper. We have limitations on all of the different types of um, vehicles that we use for investments. But right now, we're just having a, a really hard time getting out far enough to get that interest rate um, that's going to do any good. I mean, we're, we're looking at it daily, you know, with our investment advisor. So we're, we're trying to get that, but we just... There's just really nothing out there right now. Gotcha, thanks. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> okay, thanks, Tina. Um, I am just totally locked up over here, and the only thing that I know to do would be to for me to completely drop everybody out of the meeting and start it uh, all over again, which means everybody would have to sign in uh, if I'm able to turn my computer off, I, I think I'll probably lose everything. But uh, you could uh, drop out and wait a few minutes and then try to log back in. Uh, give me about three or four minutes and I'll see if I can get this thing going again. Apologize for that. Okay, guy, um, I, I believe we need to vote or on the uh, on the financial statements. So I need a motion and a second, please. I'll make a motion. Motion by second. Ed, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. Um, all approved. Say aye whenever I call your name, Ed. Aye. Erica. Aye. Bill. Aye. Darlin. Aye. Max. Aye. I am also in the affirmative. Motion carries. Thank you all. Okay, um, now what do you want to do, guy? Okay, I'm going to have to drop everybody out of the meeting. So if y'all could come back in at 9.05, uh, try to log back in again. Hopefully I will. Guy, before we, before we do that, can we, can we clear this process with Brandon? Brandon, are we uh, recessing for a brief yeah. time period? I think that'd be a good idea. The president, if, if you would just, yeah, say that, um, do a yeah. recess until 9.05, if that's what we need to. Okay, we are gonna go into recess until 9.05 due to technical issues. Um, we will log back into the same Zoom link. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, everyone log back into the same Zoom link you used to get here at 9.05. Let's go to recess, y'all. Okay, it is 9.08 or 9.09. .09. We are out of recess and we will resume the uh, back to the regular agenda. We've got all of our problem solved, Guy? Uh, hopefully so. Okay. So we're going to uh, come back to agenda item A, presentation of the 2020 City of San Angelo Development Corporation annual report. Presentation by Mr. Guy Andrews and Mr. Michael Looney. Uh, ready when you are, guys. Okay. Everybody see that screen? Yep. Okay. Well, 2020, in spite of COVID, was a great year for the uh, San Angelo Development Corporation. 
I'm going to start off first by talking about uh, what's happening at the airport in regard to uh, planes. Uh, see the picture of the airport there? I think that's just a great shot of uh, Mathis Field and the surrounding area. We do have a, a new economic development project that's underway and began in 2020 that will increase our leased hangar uh, capacity, which includes refurbishment of existing hangars and construction of new commercial hangars. Uh, during 2020, ASU approved a Bachelor of Commercial Aviation, BCA degree, and so they will be at some point uh, having facilities at the airport as well. Uh, we did receive uh, bids for construction of a new ramp that will assist the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol with expansion of their unmanned aerial vehicle operations into San Angelo, uh, bringing 40 UAVs and their pilots, and that construction is uh, now underway. There will also be a parking and uh, ramp improvement projects uh, that are currently underway. Uh, this photo here shows uh, a sort of a master plan layout of the airport and some of the options that we have for uh, placing hangars. And so all of that is still under review. And of course, uh, we announced uh, just last week uh, that we will have a second airline. Uh, SkyWest will be flying as uh, United Express from our regional airport into uh, Bush, uh, George Bush Intercontinental Houston Airport, IAH, there'll be four flights, uh, two daily out of San Angelo. Right now, the schedule is uh, one flight will leave at 9.10, another at 2.20 in the afternoon. Return flights from International will be at five or at noon and five o'clock. We're uh, underway, uh, and this began in 2020 with some uh, airport exit beautification where there was a $100,000 uh, project approved. This is across the street on the Bureau of Reclamation property. Uh, this is all designed to match work that's going on with the, uh, on the airport ground itself uh, in enhancing and beautify, beautifying the uh, entrance and exit to our airport. We also, uh, in, when we're talking about monuments, we have two monument uh, projects underway on uh, US 87. Uh, if you've been by there lately, those are uh, well along in construction, especially the, uh, the next one I'll show you. But uh, one of them is uh, called 200% uh, wool. It's the three U's. It's across from U-Haul uh, that you see in the picture that are out there by pinkies and stripes as well. This is what the enhancement will look like. Uh, currently, just what you see sort of with the three U's on it is what exists, and then the enhancements will uh, look like what's depicted in that. That's what they look like now. The other one is the working cowboy statue that is down by the Starbucks on the north side. You can see what it looks like currently in the middle and then uh, with the enhancements to that monument. In regard to uh, automobiles and uh, the highways, uh, we completed a uh, I-27 uh, study. It was mandated by uh, House Bill uh, for Interstate 27 that runs all the way from Laredo up to the uh, Texas Panhandle. So that study was completed and uh, it will be a definite reliever route for I-35. There's nothing between I-35 and the I-70 corridor. Uh, this is a picture on the left is the uh, full layout for ports to planes. It actually goes all the way from the port of Mazatlan uh, into Alberta, Canada. Uh, the map on the right shows the study that was done in Texas from Laredo up to the tip of it. 
we were actually involved in the segment two portion of that study and actually uh, Brenda Gunter led that uh, segment study. So we're well along uh, on that. Now we're looking for uh, funding for that highway. This is the I-14 corridor. Uh, it's called the Gulf State Strategic uh, Highway. It runs from basically Fort Benning, Georgia, uh, all the way across. The only place that you'll really see it in existence right now is if you're in Colleen, Texas at Fort Hood, you'll see I-14 designation, but uh, there have been movement within the federal government to begin to fund that. That comes across, it uh, takes a jaunt up through San Angelo. At some point in the future, that will intersect and run concurrently with a portion of I-27 so that uh, San Angelo in the future could become uh, a great place for distribution. Uh, it then goes up to Midland, Odessa, and then back down to I-10 to go out to uh, Fort Bliss, Texas would be the end of that trail. Uh, San Angelo Railport, as you know, is uh, just off the charts in terms of uh, accelerated growth on that. Uh, it's operated by South Plains La Mesa uh, Railroad and our public-private partnership on that. Uh, Here's a, a picture of where it's located. Uh, it is just north of the Texas Pacifico uh, classification yard um, where they assemble the trains and that sort of thing. Uh, the top of it touches part of the market 2105. Uh, the bottom of it is 50th Street. Uh, you see on the right a uh, layout, potential layout of the rails, and that's developing now. Here's some photos of the site out there, the 180 acres and some of the folks that have been uh, directly involved with the process. Uh, our consultant, Roger Horton uh, in the red jacket on the left, Rick Bacon, county commissioner for that, Chad Wisner, who is the owner operator. I don't think y'all ever seen a picture of him. Bob Schneeman, Mayor Gunter, Michael Looney, Walt Koenig and myself, and then of course, Michael never misses an opportunity to uh, get in a photo op on the locomotive. He'll probably be driving it before too long. In workforce, uh, San Angelo is currently at approximately 5% unemployment, which indicates a fast recovery from the 12% unemployment experienced early in the pandemic when businesses were shutting down. Uh, during the time we approved $150,000 in matching funds for the SME Prime program for the San Angelo Independent School District. It's uh, the curriculums in the process of being developed for that. Uh, we're in that program uh, with Ethicon, Principal LED, and the San Angelo Chamber of Commerce have all contributed to that program. It's going to provide manufacturing related training for high school students wishing to pursue a career path in manufacturing uh, with the courses beginning this year. And that training is going to be available for both Central Lakeview High Schools at the West Texas Training Center on the Howard College campus. Uh, in terms of Goodfellow Air Force Base, uh, we participated in a spring uh, DAG grant. Uh, providing $400,000 to help do that. Uh, that matching grant, the grant itself is, uh, has a total value of $10 million. Uh, what Goodfellow is doing is undertaking a project uh, on 5G communications. They'll have the first 5G tower out there. Uh, and then San Angelo will benefit from uh, the developing technology. That grant also includes some energy conversation, uh, con uh, conservation, uh, physical fitness uh, to include a covered outdoor training area and equipment, uh, improve safety and health for military working dogs uh, with the AstroTurf covered outdoor training area, enhances communications between Goodfellow and local emergency first responders with interoperable mobile radios, improves Goodfellow's hazmat response capabilities with fully equipped emergency response trailer 
and it expands a joint service student resiliency assembly area. In our business retention and expansion, we had a, a great year in that. Uh, the outcomes were that uh, 611 direct and indirect jobs were retained, uh, 101 direct and indirect jobs created, uh, 46.8 million in annual economic output, 38.15 million in capital investment. Uh, in 2020, there were four executed BREP performance agreements with incentives ranging from $36,000 to $400,000. So here are the uh, recipients of the uh, BREP deal, Centurion Planning and Design, that's also in our business incubator upstairs, $36,000. Uh, Dorado Construction Group, $150,000 for uh, expansion of their operations. Uh, Windland uh, LLC, $400,000. Uh, SMC uh, Global, $362,500. Uh, also in our business resource uh, center business factory, we have basically one tenant right now, Centurion uh, Planning and Design in the business factories that occupy six of the seven offices. Actually, uh, San Angelo to go that you just saw earlier is occupying a, a space in there. And uh, there are nine, uh, it'll actually be 11 full time employees in, uh, in the business incubator. We've had 106 total companies since inception. In the business plan competition, you met these guys this morning, the San Angelo to, guy, uh, to go, uh, first place winners for $40,000 and then they also get three months of space in the incubator and some other in-kind incentives. Second place, you also saw uh, uh, Brian Barbie on the call, uh, Texas Australia Rock Company, and there's the equipment they use in the background of that one. And then our third place winner was Netco Fire and safety, and uh, I believe they were actually in here yesterday, weren't they, Nora, doing an inspection on our equipment? Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. In our uh, tax increment and reinvestment zone, zone uh, the tiers projects, there were 13 total tiers agreements uh, that were executed in 2020 for projected capital investment of $10,015,000. Seven tiers agreements in the North Zone for capital investment of 9.5 million, and six tiers agreements in the South Zone for capital investment of $515,000. These are projects in the South Zone, the uh, San Angelo Autism Center, uh, Concho Self Storage, Reina's Tacos, This is a uh, two hig, one east, two hig properties. There are actually two of them there. Then in uh, the projects that are still in progress in the south zone are box hanger, uh, concho venue, and the spur building are in progress in the south zone. In the north zone of the tiers, uh, twofold journey properties LLC. He had, uh, I believe, two agreements. That's agreement one. Uh, then the ones that are in uh, progress in the North Zone are the Huddle House, the Kit Quick Travel Center, uh, Twofold Journal Journey Properties has a second agreement, um, Shine Bright Lube North, and Big O Auto Parts. In terms of capital improvements that were made last year in our San Angelo business and industrial park, uh, the total sales in phase one of the industrial park over the last year were, were 21.49 acres for a total of revenue of $553,255, money coming back into Costa DC. Uh, there is currently one track of approximately 7.23 acres under an option uh, first right of refusal, and that's to Allen's transport, the next one down. It also purchased 12 acres. 
Uh, Coverlay Manufacturing purchased 3.945 acres. Their uh, aftermarket uh, auto parts uh, uh, manufacturer. Uh, Dakota Investments, uh, 5.544 acres. And this is actually, uh, they're pretty close to being finished on that particular one. It's a distribution center for Frito-Lay. Here's a picture of our uh, business and industrial part from our video. Hopefully everyone has seen that so far. Uh, up at the top right would be Wagner Cat. Uh, in the middle there is Federal Express. Uh, San Angelo Archives are in that photo. We also have some uh, uh, bids in phases one and two were uh, requested back in December 2019 and the bid for phase one was $1.131 million, phase two, $2.223 million. Uh, phase 2.2 .2 is partially funded by a grant from the Federal Economic Development Administration in an amount up to 1.25 million in uh, requiring a 50-50 match by COSA DC. Uh, the total construction budget for phases 2.1 and 2.2, .2, including grant funding and 5% contingencies was $3.5 million, which provides water, sanitary, sewer, storm drainage, and street improvements. Uh, Construction in 2.1 and 2.2 is nearing completion. Uh, upon completion, the combined 2.1 and 2.2 will yield about 118 acres of sellable land. Uh, additional regional steam water detention meeting uh, with the City of San Angelo stormwater management requirements has been provided with this project, making the individual developable for lots more valuable. In underground phase three electrical distribution, natural gas distribution and fiber optic installation will begin once the basic infrastructure improvements are completed. This is a, just a diagram of uh, phases one, 2.1 and, and 2.2 in that part. Phase two, this is an aerial photo, as we said, we'll have uh, additional 118 acres that will be opened up. There's a couple of photos of that area. This is the 75,000 square foot AEP uh, building that's located in our industrial park. Now I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Looney that it will uh, be talking about our uh, targeted marketing efforts. So Michael, and just let me know when you want to change the slide. Hey guy, go ahead and hit, hit slide one. Okay. Okay. First off, uh, greetings uh, from the Chamber of Commerce. Wanted to uh, uh, thank everybody on the Coast of DC board and uh, the, the, uh, the friends at uh, Coast of DC staff for your, for your uh, support and for the working relationship. The collaboration between COSA DC and, uh, and the Chamber has really proved out some really strong results in 2020. Extremely difficult year, uh, as we all are extremely aware. Uh, we started off the year uh, pretty hopeful, but obviously by mid-February, early March, it was very obvious we had a serious uh, economic problem globally. Um, total degradation of the market, uh, we, we didn't understand what, uh, a, what we were going to be facing in a non-normalized market. So uh, what Guy and I did with uh, several of the other economic development partners in the, in the, uh, in the region is uh, formed a uh, economic response and recovery task force, which for the initial couple of, um, couple of months met uh, weekly at the uh, COSA DC office at the BRC we went to an electronic format. And what this did is this created a, an open democratic uh, method of communication between all the different in economic development partners, including lenders, to understand how to best get ahead of this problem and uh, not so much worry about the, uh, the biological side of, of the uh, pandemic, but what the economic impacts were gonna be and how we could kind of form a, uh, a defensive posture 
against um, the, the obvious economic fallout that we knew was coming. It hadn't hit yet, but we knew it was gonna hit us. And so uh, that collaborative effect um, had a, uh, I think a very strong and positive impact on local business. The chamber uh, uh, attacked it uh, with their um, recruit, with their, their, their more retail oriented side of uh, core chamber efforts and uh, actually created a special link on the website that was shared and, uh, and it was also added to collaboratively by all the other partners so that it was updated as time went on. Um, and uh, what the, uh, the Economic Development Division did, what we did is we worked with, the, with uh, Randy LeCompte at Workforce on contacting each of the manufacturers and heavy industrial operations in the region uh, to make sure that they were ready for the economic impact and for the, uh, the solutions that were provided uh, by the federal government and, um, and, uh, and local, uh, local resources. So that was, a, we think, a successful project. We'd never done it before. Uh, so Guy and uh, Walt and uh, Dave Erickson and, and, and several others were kind of working, really we were creating it as we were flying. And I think that that's something that we can all be proud of. I wanted to la add on that, we, we were approached by two different cities uh, by phone asking us, because uh, they'd heard about the program, how they could implement their own form of the program. I don't really know how much um, publicity outside the region the program got, but we did have two calls, which at least made us feel like we were reaching someone uh, outside the region. Okay, go ahead and go to the San Angelo Railport. There you go. Okay, San Angelo Railport. This is um, uh, well underway. If you have seen our weekly reports and Guy's weekly reports, you'll see some pictures of uh, what the uh, track layouts are looking like with the road base that's being put down on the property. Uh, bottom line is this project is a, a major interregional inland port that is going to interlink the rest of the North American industrial economy <clears throat> through San Angelo with Mexico and vice versa. So we see ourselves really as a hub bridge uh, along the South Orient rail line between Mexico, United States and Canada and right now, uh, what the chamber is doing is we are hitting and had been in 2020 uh, calling on uh, any and all companies that we think regionally that we think could have a, a, an interest in, in shipping bulk products. And the response has been tremendous. We right now have five different companies that we're talking to, um, which is working very well with the speed with which the uh, South Plains and La Mesa uh, Railroad is building the port. So let's go ahead and go on to the next slide. There's an image of the port that, that uh, the, the trackage layout has actually changed a little bit, uh, but that's fairly true to uh, give you an idea of the scale. Uh, the importance here being this is not a privately run single commodity uh, inland rail port uh, that is gonna depend on one or two commodities for its lifeblood. It is uh, actually gonna have 12 different uh, commodity lanes and will be open service to all industries in the region. And so that was something that Guy Andrews and uh, uh, the Coast DC board wanted to make sure uh, remained in place so that it stayed open as really basically a publicly available rail port. Okay, go on to the next slide. Okay, uh, San Angelo, this is downtown transload facility. This is a small mini port that uh, we've been working on. Um, we're, we're not quite finished with it yet, but uh, this would be a feeder to the main port and uh, take take uh, some of the pressure off of, uh, off of the main port construction. But really the main port construction is moving so fast, uh, we're not even really sure uh, how much usership this would get simply because uh, we think it's all gonna be absorbed immediately, very quickly by the main rail port. So go on to the next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you, Guy. Uh, okay, Allen's Transport. This is a company that um, is working in, um, in concert with a very large chemical company based in Houston called LSPI. Uh, LSPI Corporation is one of the only companies in the world that makes um, uh, agents that are injected into interregional pipelines. They sell this product all over the world. What Allen's does is they take the product uh, from Houston and then distribute it throughout the uh, United States and Canada. Uh, we've created a really great relationship with Allen Fandrick and, um, and he is the uh, owner of Allen's Transport. Uh, the reason you, you would have a, uh, a relationship like this is uh, Allen's Transport 
specializes in uh, haz hazardous material uh, shipping and transloading. So they're very good at it and they have an excellent safety record. And uh, they're gonna be uh, beginning construction probably within the next 60 days. Um, that uh, project got delayed slightly last year, uh, but it's back on track. And uh, that will be a co-branded Allen's Transport LSPI 25,000 square foot terminal. And uh, the economic yield on that uh, at this point, we're judging it's gonna be about uh, $2.7 million in, in economic yield. And they're uh, gonna hire 10 people. So on to the next slide. There's a, there's a compressed image of the land. Uh, that was a visitation uh, of uh, LSPI Chemical, which is the mother company of Allen's Transport. And uh, you can go on to the next slide. Uh, Double J Lamb, this was a, a, a fast deal. This was a really, really powerhouse deal that really helped stimulate uh, the lamb industry in the region. As you all know, historically, um, part of the San Angelo economy was built on the, on the, uh, the lamb uh, ranching and processing industry. Uh, Double J Lamb uh, approached us in late August uh, to discuss the potential of relocating uh, their entire operation from Greeley, Colorado, uh, which in fact happened. And uh, special uh, kudos go out to Coast DC and also to the city uh, legal department and real estate department for really making the time and uh, setting aside the uh, uh, the space in their schedules to work on this transaction. The whole transaction took basically 30 days from introduction to closing. And so there'll be more details resulting from that, but it's about a $3 million in initial capital investment. And they're projecting that they're gonna have 100 jobs. I did speak to the owner of the company last week and they've hired 40 people so far. They're looking for another 60 and they have already begun operations bringing lambs in from the Western range. Why we really like this deal is because it took an old brownfield location. This was the old rancher's lamb property that had been basically vacant for 15 years and was not improving with age. Uh, the property now is in outstanding condition. Uh, there were no incentives on this one and, uh, and neither were there any incentives on the Allen's uh, transport tran uh, transaction as well, it should be noted. Uh, so let's go on to the next slide. And there's a picture of the team at their grand opening uh, in September. Next slide, please, sir. Okay, SMC Global, this is the company that uh, just keeps on giving to San Angelo. Um, we are currently working on a uh, fourth expansion uh, for the company. They uh, have 17 employees. They're gonna create another five once they expand. Uh, this company has done just tremendous things for San Angelo. Uh, they are currently uh, one of the, 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 the purveyors of, uh, of downhole chemicals. And as the owner of the company has told us on many occasions, it really doesn't make any difference what the economy is doing. If you want to preserve your, your gear that is down hole, you need to use these preservative um, uh, products. And so their sales have um, uh, leveled off uh, last year and now they're going back up. Uh, point of interest, their Cristobal facility um, at their peak in 2020, I'm sorry, 2019 was, uh, was shipping out one, Hundred, I'm sorry, one, uh, um, yeah, 130 tankers uh, a month of product. They went down to 50 about mid 2020 when the pandemic was really gripping the economy, and now they're back up to about 100 tankers a month coming out of the Cristobal Road hydrolization facility. That facility is the one that they're going to be expanding. So that'll add a, about five more jobs. Not notable point. They hired up, had 17 people when the pandemic hit, and that was the full staff that they needed. It's a very automated process, so they don't need a lot of people to run this uh, company here. They did not let go of one person. And uh, our friend, the, the guy that we work with at the chamber and at Coast DC, Kevin Huber, the president of the company, we called him uh, when it looked like this pandemic could have severe economic negative impacts. And he told us that he is not gonna let go of anybody in San Angelo unless they wanna be let go for some reason uh, to move on to something else. And they didn't, they didn't let go of one person and, uh, and they've kept their staff intact. So let's go ahead and go on to the next slide. Uh, Creek 27, you know, one of, the, one of the main components of recruiting new companies and expanding existing companies is finding a place for everybody to live. Uh, so when, uh, so when the, uh, the report came out, the, the, the the wonderful Resentel report came out 
uh, we started peddling that to a whole lot of different potential investors and developers. And, um, and uh, here we have Creek 27. This is a, a gentleman named Justin Harden, who's out of the Houston area. This was a uh, development that's 249 uh, cottage homes. We toured them, uh, in fact, this week. They're absolutely beautiful. It was uh, no incentives uh, at all, none federal, none local. Uh, it's a full market rate transaction. These are market rate homes. They are for lease only. There will be 249 in a, almost a self-contained neighborhood right near the bluffs on Melrose. And so uh, that project is going to really help with the recruitment effort of new industry because it provides more housing options. And um, uh, I will say that uh, Justin Harden uh, told us uh, this week when he came to visit that that Resintel report that the Costa DC board approved and pushed forward made this deal happen. And he said that straight out. Um, so uh, $25 million capital investment, 100% market rate deal, critically needed housing. Um, that, that, that little report made this happen. Move on to the next slide, please, Guy. And there's a couple more shots. The property is in more of an advanced stage than that, but uh, these are some pictures from about 30 days ago. Next slide. Okay, Duke Renewables. Um, the, the, the city, the Chamber of Commerce is also contracted to Tom Green County, which serves as a link point between city and county. And so not only do we serve um, uh, Costa DC, but we also serve Tom Green County uh, just to make sure that uh, there is no border, economic development border between county and city. So we're kind of that bridge. And so uh, several of the projects that we've worked on in 2020, one of them did, did energize, and that is the Duke Energy Renewable Solar Power Plant. These projects that, that we work on uh, that uh, have attracted the renewable sector in Tom Green County uh, don't, don't take a huge amount of time because these are, these are uh, projects that involve a lot of attorneys and a lot of engineers. Uh, but what we do at the chamber is we serve as a link between the independent school districts and the county for the promotion of these projects. And uh, we help the county study these projects to see if there's something that uh, are of any value. Uh, they don't hire a lot of permanent jobs, but you'll have three to 400 people for about an 18 month period actually constructing the, the project. And then once it's energized, you'll have usually one or two people that maintain it, an engineer and then somebody to help maintain the electronics. Um, these projects are very, very high value. This one in particular was $184 million and that is taxable. And so that uh, provides a good, uh, a, a good development in the county uh, that at full levy provides very strong taxes for the county and for the independent school district. And these are really important because in a, in a normalized environment, we have between 2.9 and 3.3% unemployment. So this is a project that provides a, uh, a, a clean, silent, um, uh, very high, high value, high capital investment uh, development, but it doesn't need a very large body of people to actually run it. And so we, are, uh, we actually have five more of these projects that we're working on in 2021 and we'll keep you posted. Next slide, Guy. Okay, there's a couple of aerials. They did not allow us due to COVID restrictions onto the site, so they sent us these pictures. Uh, but the center, center line shot uh, shows a, uh, a, a footprint of the actual plant. And it should be noted that uh, San Angelo actually has two major interconnection substations that run power from the western side of the grid to the eastern side of the grid where there's the highest level of consumption. And so that also plays a very strong factor in uh, attracting these developments. Next slide. Okay, uh, one of the things that we did is, um, you know, the, the, the chamber is, is one of our hallmarks, our, our gatherings. And that obviously has uh, been somewhat curtailed um, over the, the, the pandemic time that we've been working in. But we went ahead with the West Texas Moving Forward Conference, which kind of served as sort of a replacement to the big legislative summit that we have each year. Uh, this was a hybridized um, meeting where we had some in person, some on, on, uh, on, a, on an electronic Zoom format, and it absolutely smashed records. This was an awesome conference. It was uh, very well attended. We had full capacity attendance, both electronically 
and uh, in person, and it and it probably will will continue as a uh, as a hallmark program of the chamber just because it focused so heavily on industrial development and industrial instru um, infrastructure development throughout Texas with a focus on the Concho Valley. So you'll hear more about that in the future. Next slide, please. You know, one of the things that uh, we've worked on uh, very closely with COSA DC is, uh, is uh, considering that our ag sector is such a critical part of our economy. And, um, and Guy and I determined uh, with, with several other partners commenting that we really need to focus a lot more on, on the agribusiness side of our, of our economy. One of the things that we've done just to get an understanding of the status is uh, Guy and I worked, have been working with uh, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. Um, Guy, aren't you supposed to whoop? Whoop. Thank you. Um, and uh, this report last was published in 2011. And so uh, we contacted AgriLife, told them we're gonna write a new report and could they provide any data? And they said, guys, we'll do it. You help us and uh, get it in the format that you want. And, um, and then they're gonna go from there. So really AgriLife picked up the heavy lifting on it and uh, has a draft report. It's a very strong report. And, um, and we're gonna be publishing that publicly uh, probably in the next 60 days. And so that's a very important status report uh, that shows what the impact of agriculture is on the Concho Valley. So let's go on to the next slide, please. Uh, there's a little bit of a summary. You, the, the takeaway is that you have an industry that um, uh, produces about $800 million a year annually to the region. Uh, next slide, please. And then uh, finally, one of the uh, important programs that, that interlinks the rail port and the different uh, industrial and agricultural recruitment efforts and support efforts um, is uh, the Texas-Mexico Border Transportation Plan. This is a program that we have been drawn into uh, um, by Texas Department of Transportation really to understand what the impacts of the, the bridge at Presidio will be. You remember the bridge at Presidio is one of only seven points of entry for rail between the United States and Mexico. That's the US and Mexico, not just Texas and Mexico, but the United States and Mexico. The bridge at Presidio that runs, that will run train traffic through San Angelo is set to open in April. The bridge is completed. And right now we're just waiting on customs control to uh, input their, uh, their equipment so that they can begin running uh, unit trains and manifest trains uh, between Mexico and the United States. Uh, the port will serve uh, as, a, uh, as a hub for transportation and transloading of products, both importing and exporting. But we needed to understand what that impact would be. And so you'll hear more in uh, 2021 on the results. Uh, but we have been, uh, COSA DC and the Chamber have been warmly welcomed by TxDOT to participate. They need our participation. Because when you think about it, when that traffic comes across that bridge north into the United States, the first destination is San Angelo. We should also add that our, our, um, our partner organization in Chihuahua, Mexico, or their economic development, regional economic development organization that we're working with, they consider San Angelo to be the gateway because really Presidio is essentially just a bridge, uh, but they consider San Angelo to be a gateway. And also that's encouraged by the fact that Texas Pacifico Rail actually has their headquarters in San Angelo. So we've garnered a lot of attention with our economic development partners in Northern Mexico. You'll hear a lot more about that in 2021. Guy, I think that kind of wraps up my uh, report. So I'll let you take it from there. Okay, so uh, we'd be glad to entertain questions that uh, anyone might have in regard to what was accomplished in 2020. A great year. Any uh, questions, comments from the board about any projects from last year or looking forward? To the next. Hey, guy, it's Ed. I have a question. We can hey, barely hear you, Ed. His questions for Guy. Hey, Guy, on the monument signs that were discussed. Yes. Um, have have we considered? Um, I mean, we just saw a presentation from our second place winner, that Texas uh, Oss Rock. I mean, would that be something that we could kind of, uh, I don't know if it's already been bid out or whatnot, but kind of showcase 
you know, a local product and, and, and some of those monument signs, because, I mean, it looks like with all the renderings, it, it's a lot of rock work and things of that nature. So just food for thought, or can you kind of give some insight on that? Absolutely. We would want to consider them. All of these projects actually were bid out or, or in progress now. So uh, with the local uh, landscaping company is doing them, but uh, I think these are just the beginning of welcome top monuments uh, for San Angelo. So uh, we we'll certainly want to loop them in to any future bidding and that sort of thing. Okay, does anyone else have questions about the annual report? I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to answer that. Pulls down the design. <laughs> no, you're good. No, sir, we have not. Nothing. Well, yeah, you never know what's going to happen with Valentine's, but. Yeah. Okay, now, and I'll let you know if we do. All right, thanks. Sorry, guys, I'm here by myself today. Okay. Everybody good? All right. Thanks, uh, Guy and Michael. Okay. Hey, guys, I just want to say good job in uh, 2020. Thank um, you. Appreciate that was, it. That was, uh, that was an interesting 12-month cycle, but uh, y'all killed it. So, yeah. I you, know, you know, the relationship that we have with the Chamber and the Small Business Development Center and other partners, uh, really helps to make us successful in that. And, you know, we've worked very hard to establish that relationship. So we appreciate uh, all the hard work that's put in by everybody. Uh, it's exciting to see what's happening in San Angelo. And I would just add, you ain't seen nothing yet this way. Good. It's coming yeah, with if, a vengeance. <laughs> if I could just uh, make a quick statement. Um, I'm the I'm the relative newcomer here. Uh, 2020 has been a very interesting uh, transition for me. Um, I've been doing economic development for some time, and I would say that, you know, any any number of one or two or three of these projects we've talked about today in a year for a community of our size would be a great win. Uh, the number and the scope and the diversity of the projects that are currently being booked uh, is just remarkable to me, and uh, I'm very honored to be part of the team and. Uh, the Chamber's experienced eight consecutive months of net membership growth, and a lot of that's attributable to the fact that we, as a community, are moving our e economy forward, despite the challenges we see. So um, great, great uh, year. Thank you to the board for their service, to our community, and our efforts. And uh, like I said, 2021 is going to be awesome. Great. Thanks, Walt. All right. Um, anybody else have anything? Okay, we will now move into uh, item C, we'll, a public hearing regarding the use of sales and use tax funds in an amount not to exceed 1200000 to provide an economic development incentive to SkyWest Airlines Incorporated, approving an air services and revenue guaranteed agreement with Sky West Airlines Incorporated and approving the amendment to the professional services performance agreement with San Angelo Chamber of Commerce, directing advertising support to Sky West Airlines Inc. per the agreement. Presentation by Mr. Guy Andrews. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a required public hearing before we can undertake a project. Uh, and regard to the terms of the SkyWest agreement, uh, they expressed that they would consider establishing their regional corporate headquarters facilities from which to operate daily scheduled air service from San Angelo Regional Airport to George Bush Intercontinental Airport in Houston. 
The agreement would be for approximately a two year period with the actual start date to be dependent on the time it takes to establish a new station in San Angelo. We now know that that is April 21st. Uh, tickets will be available for purchase on February the 2nd. Uh, we've negotiated a revenue guarantee agreement not to exceed a million dollars to operate as original carrier for daily scheduled service. On, they'll be using uh, Bombardier uh, SRJ 200 aircraft that are 50 passenger original jets, very nice, two seats on each side of the aircraft. Uh, SkyWest would be reimbursed quarterly by the City of San Angelo Development Corporation for flights in the previous quarter that do not meet the passenger revenue requirements to cover current fuel and non-fuel hourly costs to operate the aircraft on that route. Basically what that says is if their revenue falls below their cost, then we pay money out of that million dollars. So it could be best case scenario that we would never pay money. Everybody's utilizing it. They're meeting their revenue requirements, but the million dollar is a guarantee for that two year period of time. And all of this is used to offset the uh, startup costs for SkyWest entering a new market. Uh, also in the agreement, the uh, Development Corporation, uh, via an amendment to the uh, uh, Costa DC Chamber Professional Service Agreement, would provide $200,000 in advertising and marketing support during the course of the agreement. Uh, we will be having the first meeting this afternoon with SkyWest marketing team to uh, lay out a course of action on that. And then the third part of the agreement is that the uh, city of San Angelo would waive rental fees and landing fees at that port uh, during the agreement time. And all of this is also to offset the uh, airline's startup cost of entering a new market. Uh, there's a picture of the Bombardier CRJ 200 regional jets, very nice aircraft. Uh, there's a seating chart for it. You can see there are two seats on uh, both sides, so a, a nice uh, roomy aircraft to fly on. Uh, these are the, the, this is the initial schedule of flights. We hope these will improve over time as uh, they see demand. Uh, right now you'll have a 9, 10 a.m. flight and a, a 2.20 flight out of San Angelo return trips at noon and five o'clock in the afternoon. We are also applying for a, uh, what's called a small community air services development program <coughs> grant. Uh, we didn't think it would, could wait for uh, re uh, re uh, the possibility of receiving that grant since the timing was right for us to move into this. But if we do receive the SCSI P grant, those monies will be used to reimburse COSA DC for uh, the expenses on that. And uh, we did, we've already gathered the support letters for the grant application, the joint effort between uh, Chamber, Sarma, and ourselves, and we collected over uh, 25 high level support letters for that. So we're hoping to get that, but be glad to answer any questions. And this is a public meeting for public comment. Okay, any questions, concerns from the board? nor do we have anything from the public. No, sir, we do not. Okay, I will now open the public hearing. It is 9.58. We have no comments, nothing from the public. So I will now close the public hearing. It is also 9.58. Thank you, Guy. Thank you. Moving on to D, consider appointing a president, first vice president, and second vice president for the City of San Angelo Development Corporation presentation by Mr. Guy Andrews, Director of Economic Development. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. We have had uh, some movement within our board that uh, allow us to have some different appointments for our, our executive staff, uh, uh, Dr. Cunningham, uh, Cummings has uh, 
resign from the board effective with our next meeting, which he was our uh, second vice president that was moving up. Uh, Mr. Dindal is also on the school board, which as everyone knows, that is more than a full-time job. And uh, with the COVID and other circumstances this year, he just didn't feel like he had the time to, to uh, dedicate to that. So in order to maintain continuity, what uh, is being recommended uh, is that uh, Mr. Coles be retained uh, for another year as our board president. Uh, Max Puello would be appointed as the uh, first vice president and Erica Lara as the second vice president on the board. So uh, with that, uh, Mr. President, you can entertain a motion for acceptance or take other additional nominations or well, what if I want to object? But, well, you can do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or concerns about the motion of the board? I would entertain a motion. We're not out of I'll, make, I'll make a motion. Thank you, Ed. Do I have a second? I will second. Bill? Uh, all in favor say aye. Ed? Aye. Erica? Aye. Bill? Aye. Garland? Aye. Max? Aye. And I am um, also in the affirmative, so motion carries. Thank you all. That will begin at our next meeting, February meeting. That's correct. Okay. Moving on to line item E, consider a resolution authorizing the board president to negotiate and execute a professional services agreement with Centurion Planning and Design, LLC, and a sum not to exceed $5,800 to perform professional engineering and design services for the structural design of two monument signs at the intersection of Highway 67, Frontage Road and Monument Drive at the entrance of Phase 2 of the San Angelo Business and Industrial Park, a project authorized under Chapter 501 of the Development Corporation Act for infrastructure improvements necessary for development of a portion of the San Angelo Business and Industrial Park. Subject to approval of the City Council. Presentation by Mr. Guy Andrews. As by, or, by Mr. Schneeman. Is Bob here? I'm sorry, Bob yes. is here. Yes, Bob is here. Sir. Bob Schneeman. Uh, I've just been very quiet. Good morning, board. Um, as y'all are aware, this is, a, this is one of the existing monuments we have in phase one of the industrial park. Uh, the, those monuments were constructed back in probably 2004. And uh, we had this, the signs refaced a couple of years ago. The stru original structural drawings just don't exist anymore on this thing. And because of the height and size of them and the fact that there is uh, uh, plumbing electricity that's run to them, um, they will require uh, permitting. And uh, as a result, they'll require structural design. So we've gone to um, uh, Centurion Planning and Design. They will be doing the, the structural design on it. Uh, you can go to the next slide, if you will. Uh, the total proposed fee engineering is uh, $5,800. Uh, there's a copy of the proposal in your packet. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions, concerns from the board? I think we're good to go. Uh, do I have a motion? So move. Thank you, Max. Do I have a second? Thank you, uh, Eric. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. Ed? Aye. Erica? Aye. Bill? Aye. Garland? Aye. Max? Aye. And I as well. Motion carries. Thank you all. Moving on to line item F, consider a resolution authorizing the board president to negotiate and execute a professional services agreement with Park Hill Smith and Cooper Inc. 
Park Hill in a sum not to exceed $25,000 to perform professional engineering and design services for the preparation of a stormwater pollution prevention plan and technical specifications for lot clearing to be performed at phase two of the San Angelo Business and Industrial Park, a project authorized under Chapter 501 of the Development Corporation Act for infrastructure improvements necessary for development of a portion of the San Angelo Business and Industrial Park. Subject to approval of the City Council, presentation by Mr. Bob Schneeman. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, as the board is aware, the um, uh, in infrastructure improvements for phase, basically phase two of the uh, industrial park is nearing completion and uh, looking forward um, to uh, uh, marketing some of the property out there. Uh, we had a discussion at our, I believe it was our last meeting on priorities for the industrial park. The monument signs that you just approved were uh, one of the priorities and brush clearing uh, of some of the lots is our, was our, uh, the second priority. Um, we've approached uh, Park Hill, Smith and Cooper because they have all of the drawings and everything applicable to phase two, but um, what will require, uh, it's actually a federal requirement through uh, the Environmental Protection Agency and uh, uh, state through uh, Texas uh, uh, TCEQ. Um, there will be a, a what's called a notice of intent that needs to be filed and as part of that uh, we will need a uh, stormwater pollution prevention plan to be in place. Uh, that plan needs to be prepared by an engineer and we've gone to Park Hill, Smith & Cooper. They gave us a proposal of uh, $18,000 to prepare the plan exhibits and also technical specifications uh, that would uh, uh, be used for bidding the project. Uh, we intend to uh, offer the contractor or the potential contractor several options. They can uh, grind the, the brush and spread it, mix it in with the existing soils. They can, uh, of course, cut it and remove it, uh, haul it off. They could uh, burn it if they can get a burn permit for it. There's also some uh, uh, structural elements out there. Guy and I walked a site the other day. There's a very large uh, uh, stock tank, concrete stock tank above ground. There's uh, an existing well uh, on the pro property. We will have to have that well plugged, but that'll be under separate contract. Um, and then there's some piping, some water troughs and that sort of thing that are back in the brush. So all of that's gonna to have to be disposed of. And so we need a fairly comprehensive set of uh, technical specifications to um, address all of that. Uh, so the, the proposed fee is $18,000 from uh, Park Hill, Smith and Cooper. We've, uh, they also uh, anticipate some reimbursables like at least one trip down here, maybe two um, any reproduction or anything like that. So, uh, we're recommending that we do a total budget of $25,000 for this, uh, project. I'd be more than happy to answer questions. Uh, any questions, concerns from the board? Hearing none, I would ask for a motion. So moved. Thank you, Bill. Do I have a second? Second. second. Next. Thank you, Max. Do I have a any any further discussion? Everybody good? All right. Uh, vote. Whenever I call your name, Ed. Hi. Erica. Hi. Bill. Hi. Garland. Hi. Max. Todd also I so motion carries. Thank you all. Follow up of administrative uh, issues. We have none. Uh, we don't have any uh, closed session issues. So I would 
Um, can I ask a question of the board right now? Is that okay? okay. Uh, is it related to, I guess, a future item? This relates to future meetings. Okay. Yeah, I think that'd be appropriate. Okay. I, um, I would like to start meeting back in person, obviously socially distanced and uh, spreading out like we should. But does anyone on the board object to that or I'm going to try to talk to whoever we need to talk to. I just feel that if we can do it in person, um, you get a better feel, you get a, you know, it's just better. So does anyone object to that that's on the board? All right. Well, then I will, um, I'll email Michael Dane. And uh, just, no. we're going to try to start meeting in person. I'm going to see what I can do. So I was just giving you all a heads up on that. Okay. All right. Anybody else got anything else? I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Thank you, Ed. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you, Eric. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Ed. Aye. Erica. 